Hello, I'm Nisha Mother, and welcome to Keys to Kismet. Today, we're at a very special event at Philadelphia Distilling. You may have heard comments like, stay out of the sun, you'll get dark. You're pretty for a dark-skinned girl. He's so fair, he must be from a good family. These types of comments reflect the attitudes and cultural meaning assigned to skin color in the South Asian community. Colorism negatively impacts one's sense of self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth. Raising our awareness and identifying the factors that contribute to colorism is important for our mental health. We must create change and try to protect the children and adolescents around us from the negative and often harmful effects of colorism. Today, we feature former Miss America winner, activist, and producer, Nina Devaluri. Despite her iconic pageant win, like many women across the world, Nina has faced the archaic beauty standards surrounding colorism. So, Nina set out on a three-year journey to capture the real stories of those directly impacted by colorism and to advocate on a larger scale what it means to break away from these stigmas. Nina, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us and for all the amazing work that you're doing. I'd Thank like you. to take it back and talk about your childhood a little bit. Tell us about some of the comments and some of the insinuations that were made when you were a child. Yeah, during that time, I mean, we grew up going back to India every summer, uh, visiting my grandparents and family. Um, and it was, you would hear the comments, you know, don't go out in the sun, you're, you'll get too dark. Um, and it wasn't even necessarily the comments. I think for me, what always stood out, you know, they were always there in the background, but really stood out um, were the ads. You always saw skin whitening ads. You know, when I was eight years old visiting India, um, I was out in the sun and, you know, we would pl play on the streets as children should be doing. Um, and I had a patch of eczema on my skin. Um, it was on my forehead. And my uncle took me to see the dermatologist there. And the dermatologist gave me a cream and, you know, he said, apply it twice a day. And I could have cared less about the eczema, I looked at him directly and I said, do you have a cream that will make me lighter? And I remember like, at first I like whispered it to my uncle being like, can you ask him, can you ask him? And he was like, no, I'm not gonna ask him that. Um, because I also begged my family for these products and I was fortunate that they didn't encourage it and they didn't feed into, you know, buying this product. Um, but I still wanted it so desperately. Um, you and were impacted. I was impacted. And that dermatologist looked me in the eye and he said, why? Black is beautiful. And I, again, very fortunate to be in that position that someone was saying that to me. But in my head, I was like, no, it's not. Like, it's just not. Well, Nina, you made your way to 2014, winning the Miss America title. I remember in my family room watching that pageant to see a South Asian woman win that title. It, it meant so much for, for our whole community. Thank you. Your new Miss America is... Miss New York! <laughs> Miss New York, Nina Davalu. Tell us what that moment was like when you won. Oh, I, I mean, I don't think I, I'm, I'm finally now recognizing that the impact I've had, I might never understand um, because I just don't know. And when I hear people like you say it and others have said it to me, you know, it's just, it's really special. And I feel like now I'm starting to acknowledge that. Whereas before it just didn't necessarily click in that way. Um, and I went in wanting to be the first South Asian. Um, you know, I knew that that was going to be an iconic moment for the organization. Uh, to the effect that it was, I wasn't, I had no idea what it would become. Miss America, the runway is yours. I have to say, you know, growing up, I was really lucky because 
Um, I grew up in a, when I was in uh, Michigan, I was in a small town. I was probably one of six Indian families that we had. And so we did have a small knit community. I was able to take that sense of my identity and also carry that forward into Miss America because I was proud of being Indian. I was proud of like always showing my talent. I always did a, you know, Indian class. I was classically trained in Bharatanatyam and Kuchpudi, but like, you know, I always did a talent for my talent show at school. And so that was just something that was so core to who I was that I didn't even think twice. Right. Now, the day after the pageant, you received some negative comments. Tell us about those comments and were you surprised? I, I wasn't surprised by the negative comments. Um, you know, I was actually quite prepared for them because I knew should I win, being the first South Asian, um, there would be a lot of people might have some preconceived notions about what that meant or who I was. Um, this was also in the peak of Twitter, you know, when Twitter was, everyone was tweeting behind their handles, which, you know, still happens. Um, but, you know, I was called a terrorist. I was called Miss 7-Eleven. Um, I was called un-American. And I will say what, what did also make me really proud was that for every negative tweet I received, I received probably 10 times, if not you know, 20 times numbers of positive tweets and support and community from, from not only America, but really all across the world. Tell us about some of the comments you received regarding your skin color. Yeah, um, so while this you know, co one conversation was happening, the other piece of the conversation that was kind of you know, a little, under the radar, but still there, um, was this idea of colorism. And I remember, you know, I'm scrolling through Twitter the morning after I win, and it's like 5 a.m. You're like, you're not processing what just happened in general. Um, and I open Twitter, and there's like a time, there's a headline in an Indian newspaper that said, "Is Miss America too dark to be Miss India?" And that was a moment where I just thought, really. Like, well, first of all, the answer is no. I would have never <laughs> been Miss India. We've never seen a dark skinned, really anyone represented, sadly, within our own community, which right. is so heartbreaking. Um, it had to happen for me here first, right? right? And, and America had to consider me beautiful here first. Of course. Um, to even open this conversation, to, even, to be even allowed to speak out on this, because other people just didn't have, don't have the platform, right? Like not all of us do. Um, and so for me to finally say, no, this is the time where I can actually use my voice. I have a story and I know I'm not alone in this. And that's what really planted the very first seed for complexion, um, which is out now. As you can see, I'm a dark skinned Telugu girl and I grew up with the comments of, oh, you know, don't go out in the sun, you'll get too dark don't wear this color, It'll make you look darker. And I'd always brush it off as it's just the way it is. Well, here I am 33 years old and I would still receive these comments and brush it off as it's just the way it is. Or as I put on clothes, I would think internally, do I look fairer or does it make me look too dark? Well, after watching Complexion with Nina Davaluri, I had an aha moment. I realized no, it doesn't have to be this way, and it shouldn't be. Especially for, I wouldn't want the same thing to happen with my two daughters. When we return, Nina talks about her documentary, Complexion, that captures the real stories of those directly impacted by colorism and is an impactful movement to conquer these stigmas. We're back with Nina Devaluri, who talks about Complexion, her eye-opening documentary that focuses on the need to dismantle the social hierarchy linked to fairer skin. The documentary includes insightful interviews that examine the complex ways in which colorism affects us today, from employment opportunities to marriage prospects. Nina, tell us why you decided to make your documentary Complexion. So many reasons, but I think it was kind of one moment after the other recognizing that we never answered, I never understood why we were doing this. I never set out to be a documentary filmmaker. I never you know, thought that was part of my journey, um, but it just kept coming back to storytelling. I knew I enjoyed sharing my story and I could see how other people connected with that and then gave them the space to share theirs, right? Um, which there's so few of us able to do that. 
Where is this obsession for fair skin coming from? <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, if we unpack it, like, you know, logically, it points to colonialism, casteism. Um, I think there's obviously layers of that socioeconomic status. Um, but I really feel like it comes back to sort of this, it's a measure of our proximity to whiteness. And we've held that as the image of elite. Um, and so I think that image is still quite hard to dissolve when it's seeped into so many layers of our community. I realized when I was filming the documentary, this was the first time, every place I went, this was the first time anyone asked someone, how did you feel when you heard those comments? Like That's true. that just wasn't even asked to them. Um, and I'm sure it wasn't asked to many of us either, right? Exactly. Um, and so it's just opening that conversation. Right. Right. Now, the beauty industry is monetizing on this beauty standard. Yeah. $8.8 .8 billion industry yeah. for lightning creams. Yeah. Yes. $8.8 .8 billion, uh, which is so incredibly frustrating. Um, and that's expected to grow. And that's expected to grow. I, the way I try to explain it to people <laughs> um, as, as I'm grappling through this as well is, you know, the skin whitening and tanning industries are both of them are billion dollar industries, right? And they both sell opposite and opposing messaging. <laughs> true. Right? Like to That's the end true. consumer, it is, this tan is the beauty standard. No fair is the beauty standard. That's a good way of looking at yeah. it. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and when like we actually think about it, it's like, well, who's creating this messaging? Who's profiting off of it? Um, and why are we buying into it? You know, I realized it's not it's it's not about I created a petition called See My Complexion, um, where it called on companies um, to uh, to end the production of their skin whitening creams or do better. Um, and I said it's not always about taking the product off the shelf because that's right. not the solution to this. Right. And that's not what I'm saying, because people will still want it. Yes. Right. And they will find a way to get it, whatever that whether it's healthy or not. Um, so it's really about shifting the ideology. Right. You got to go to the core. Yeah. Right. The thinking. This topic was so important to me for a couple of reasons. So as a social worker, I'm always trying to bring topics to light. We in our South Asian community don't really talk about a lot. So I know this is so sensitive. A lot of our family has been through um, all of these experiences and it's just crazy how much conversation sparks just from watching the documentary. I know my mom has mentioned some moments where she's felt like that had comments from families and it just hurts my heart and i'm also a mother of a young daughter who i'm seeing right now is already having some image issues and i'm trying to explain to not just her but my son too let's be you know proud of ourselves love who you are it doesn't matter you know trying to build that confidence nina tell us about the connection between colorism and dowry yeah that was interesting for me to um, hear firsthand from stories from the documentary about, you know, the darker skin, the more dowry um, the family expects to receive, which dowry is also like a whole yes. concept that needs its own <laughs> documentary. It. I agree. I <laughs> um, agree. You know, there's so much there. Yes. Um, and so I think like just even seeing the people share this, what happened to them is the most powerful thing. Now, there's a revolution happening on social media. Tell us why communication is so important and opening the conversation is yes. so important. So in 2020, I created a petition called See My Complexion and it called on skin whitening companies as well as the Bollywood industry and media conglomerates to basically do better with representation, their marketing, their wording and their messaging. And all of this is connected because one feeds into the other. Right. And the, the problem is very easily solvable. <laughs> it's just have more darker skin representation. Right. That's not to take away from anyone who is lighter skin. And I'm not saying lighter skin is bad. It's no. just but there needs to be more of us who represent all of, uh, of South Asia. Agreed. Right. And there's room for everyone. I, I really do believe that. Um, and so with that, you know, I had probably around 30,000 signatures, um, which in some ways is a lot. Now you are a change maker. I mean, this is incredible. Thank you. You're taking so many steps. I mean, with your documentary, the petition, just speaking out and, and just making everyone out there comfortable Thank you. talking about this. That's amazing. Now, how do we break forward and, and, and break these deeply ingrained thoughts on colorism? That was really what I hoped complexion would start. Yes. Uh, because I realized 
you know, there's never a good time to have a hard conversation. When do you say, today's the day I'm gonna sit down and discuss all of my issues that I've had with, you know, unpack it with colorism. Like, you just don't have days like that in real life, you know, um, as much as we would love to have them. Um, being able to sit down with your family, I think this is a generational conversation. Um, so I, I watched it with my mom, right? And like, I, I know that, you know, even today we're watching it, it's a mother and daughter event. Um, and I think that's a huge piece of this is because it's one thing to, you know, come to terms with it on by yourself, but then having the support and yes. having the Oprah conversation in your family is the next part of that. That's true, that's true. Um, after doing this documentary, any, message or takeaways? I know it's hard, it's a lot, yeah. but what message do you have for our viewers after going through this whole experience? Yeah, I think the biggest shift that happened for me was that when I was filming, it went from that could have been me to no, this little girl is me. And that little girl is actually inside all of us. Um, and that was just a moment where I recognized that regardless of where we come from, right, we're all human beings. And you know this, but like it was a very clear, we're all human beings, we're all connected, we all have these same emotions, and we all want one thing, and that's to feel seen, valued, and heard. There was a mother who bought her daughter a packet. She gave it to her and said in Telugu, so you don't have the life that I have. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Miss America is... I was told that I was too dark, that I would be so much more beautiful if I was lighter skinned. She's dark. Tell her to go off the stage. Being dark, people criticize you. The world is changing. It's so hurting. I just want people to stop. The global market for skin whitening creams in 2022 was $8.8 .8 billion. And I have to ask why. Why are we teaching our young girls this? Why is this the beauty standard? Why do they feel that from the age of seven, they have to use these products? What is beauty really costing us? When we return, we take you to the Loving the Skin I'm In brunch, presented by South Asian Americans for Change, SAAFC, in collaboration with Nina Devaluri. This event aims to address the impact of colorism and unrealistic beauty standards on the mental health of South Asian Americans. Hi, I'm Sameet Shukla. Uh, I am co-founder of South Asian Americans for Change, and we are here at Philadelphia Distilling uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, having an important conversation about colorism. One of the, the important parts of this conversation is the impact to mental health in the South Asian American community. Uh, we want to destigmatize uh, the conversation of mental health and really provide an opportunity for folks to come together and really uh, make change possible. We truly believe that, that the voice of many uh, is greater than the voice of one. So today we have a fireside chat with uh, Nina Davaluri, and it's going to get uh, extremely personal. There'll be a Q&A with the, with the audience, uh, so um, a lot of engagement. Um, and we, the idea was to keep it uh, a little bit smaller so that uh, we can have that sort of intimate conversation uh, about colorism and really have the time to talk uh, in depth about it. What I have been asking myself is how do I even navigate this journey of beauty and self-love? You know, what do I do every day as I'm talking about this out in the world? Just, you know, hopefully we can leave the you world know, just a little healthier place than we found it. Nina, tell us a little bit about your collaboration with SAFC and what this event is about. Yeah, I'm so excited for today um, because I think when we talk about colorism and beauty, I think we can't talk about beauty and colorism without the mental health piece. Beauty is certain a 
part of this conversation. And so um, partnering with them to do this mother-daughter event was, was so special and exciting for me because um, like I said, this is a generational conversation. Unless we have the conversation with our parents, we can't expect that to not filter down to our, our kids, right? To me, it feels like I also have a nephew. So, you know, now I'm thinking about all of these things yes. is that I don't, whatever a comment said in passing by an older generation person, mm -hmm. they know, they will hear those comments. And those, I've heard those comments, we all have, and they affect us in so many ways. I have personal experience with colorism because I am a lot more dark skinned, have a darker complexion than my mom does. She's very fair skinned. Um, she's actually one of the only fair-skinned women in her family. The rest are sort of darker skin. And so growing up, she told me a story actually how um, when they were matching her sisters up for marriage, they would have to hide my mom so that they wouldn't want to marry my mom. Um, so my mom was very sensitive about my skin tone as well. And she'd often tell me, don't go out in the sun, things like that. And as I got older, I just realized that, you know, why am I doing this? I I like the way that I look. I like the way that colors look on me. Like, I think it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be bad to be dark. One of the things for Soft for Change is that um, we really want to use art to sort of be that stepping stone to more difficult conversations. Art is such a powerful vehicle for expressing emotion. I personally write poetry and um, I've used it to process the world around me. So it seems so natural that hey, let's invite these artists who are South Asian to sort of get the conversation started. And you'll be having a fireside chat today. Yeah. Um, tell us about that and why it's so important. I know we've talked about this throughout the episode, yeah. but why it's so important to open this conversation and talk about our feelings. Yeah, because I think it's so important because unfortunately, sometimes we just don't have the language or the courage. And it does take a lot of courage to, to say these things out loud. and. It's really sad because I've noticed that it's actually the people closest to you that's it's hardest for us to share the most vulnerable things to the people closest to us. Incredible. Well, we're looking forward to, to going right upstairs and uh, getting this conversation started. Likewise. Thank Thanks. you so much, Nina, for being here Thank today. You. Thank you. So I've actually been following Nina ever since she won Miss America as you know the first South Asian person to win such a huge title. and. Over the past several months, I had been seeing advertisements about this documentary that she was making called Complexion, and I knew that it was based on colorism in the South Asian community. And so I wanted to watch the movie with my mom and dad. Um, my mom has a much darker complexion, and my dad is really fair. And so colorism has been a theme throughout our entire lives. Like, I fear more on my dad's side, my sister fears more on my mom's side. So we have a variety of complexions in our family. and you know, passive aggressive comments from other people, or sometimes we even feel that internally ourselves have, have come up as we were growing up. And so it actually was a really great experience watching the movie with my mom and dad. We had an extremely healing discussion afterwards. They talked about their experiences. And one thing that really stuck with me was that they were surprised to learn that colorism is still an issue today, like in the South Asian community in the United States. Skin tone biases are developed through a complex interplay of family, community, marketing practices, and popular culture. Colorism can impact many aspects of your life, including how you feel about yourself, your identity, your relationships, and access to life opportunities. Most detrimental, the systematic consequences of colorism can impact your mental health. Thank you to change activists like Nina Devaluri and SAAFC for opening the conversation and confronting colorism. I'm Nisha Motha reminding you that you're beautiful and to grab your keys to Kismet and seize your destiny.